Hello everybody, my name is Will Nathans and I'm an art tutor with the Dublin and Dunleary Education Training Board. In today's lesson, I'm going to focus on a portrait uh, done in charcoal on gray paper using white chalk. Now this is a very, um, this is just a great way to draw the portrait because in using the white chalk on the gray paper you can really develop the form and create beautiful highlights that you wouldn't ordinarily get with just pencil and on a white sheet of paper. Uh, and gray paper you can get in any art shop or you can order it online and the same with the white chalk. So it's just a white chalk pencil that I've sharpened. And this is my charcoal pencil that I've sharpened. And just a kneaded eraser. Now for my portrait I'm going to use um, an old photograph in a book that I have of the uh, French painter uh, Piet Mondrian. If you're familiar with Mondrian's work um, he did a very famous painting of, it was called Broadway Boogie Woogie. It was um, kind of an abstract expressionist painting of um, New York City Broadway during the jazz age. It's a very famous painting. If you Google it, you'll see what I mean. But he has a very, he's got a very striking face. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to portray that for you in, on the, on the page here. So just to begin, whenever you're beginning a portrait, well, we start off with the general shape of the person. Okay, so Mondrian has a very distinctive forehead. So what I'm going to do first is just generally sketch out the overall shape. So basically, the head is an oval, an oval shape. Also, if you bear in mind too, when you're beginning a portrait, try to hold your pencil. As opposed to this, hold it more like this. This way you're holding it. I was taught, I learned recently holding your pencil like this is called the candlestick method or candlestick manner. I think because it's as if you're holding a candlestick, that sort of way. And it's going to free you up because if you're drawing like this, as if you're writing, you're going to be more inclined to draw these little details. But if you hold your pencil like this, it'll prevent you from rushing into the details. So here's Mondrian's head, and then I'm going to get a sense of his neck. It's just the, the tilt of his shoulders. So he's his right shoulder is raised just a little bit. And then the gaze. So the central median line is roughly somewhere like that. Now remember, halfway on the head is your lower eyelid or tear duct. So I'm going to mark that in. And then if I... So just above that then is the brow. And then half of that again is the nose from the chin, and then from the bottom of the nose to the chin, half of that is the mouth, roughly. Now, not everybody corresponds exactly to these measurements, but if you initially lightly put them in, you can alter your portrait depending. Okay, so if you remember from an earlier lesson, I was talking about the silhouette. So the silhouette is just the shadow pattern of the portrait. So that's what I'm going to focus on with. with Mondrian's head here. I'm going to just focus on the shadow pattern. The light is coming from the top left and for the most part most of the, sh the shadow is on the right hand side. So I'm just going to slowly model my shadow shape and fill all this in. Now bear in mind just as I'm doing this I'm just going to talk a little bit about the structure of the head. So this is the brow ridge we get the brows in. And you know, just by focusing on the shadow shapes, that's where the lightness comes in. So the brow ridge casts a great bit of shadow underneath where the eyes nestle. So I'm going to create that hollow for you just by focusing on the shadow shapes. If you notice, I'm just keeping the same value. I don't want to go too dark or too light, I'm just sticking with the same shadow pattern. Okay, from the brow ridge we have the nasal bone and that comes down. Okay. That's the base of base of the nose here. Now he has a distinctive mustache, so I'm just gonna incorporate that. into the shadow pattern. 
this was the 19, this is 1926. So this would have been the, I suppose, the popular fashion of men's uh, facial hair. Okay, so this is going back to the eye. This is the hollow of the eye. Just get a sense of the ocular structure in there. And if you just stick with the shadow pattern at first, just keep everything the same value. Now, when you're laying in the eyes, just be sure that the top of the iris, the iris being the colored part of the eye. That's the pupil. The pupil is the dark part. The iris is the colored part. Just make sure that that is lining up with the other eye. Now there could be a fold of skin hanging down, but for the most part, just focus on placing the top of the iris equal with the other one. You could also use the tear duct. You know, that point, that line, just make sure that they're both lining up, okay? Okay, so the shadow of the upper eyelid hangs over the white of the eye. So I'm just going to indicate that, that fold. Okay, here's the, the temple, just just alongside the edge of the outer corner of the eye is where the line of the temple is. So, I'm just, so just indicate that. Okay, on the other side, you can see it very distinctly on the other side. That'll help you to line everything up. That's the top portion of the face. Okay. This is the, now the right side of the left eye is all in shadow, so indicate that as well. And again, that upper eyelid hangs over the eye, so it creates a very distinctive shadow. <clears throat> I personally find if I get the eyes in, it lays the framework for the rest of the portrait. Now, I don't have to go into such great detail, but as long as the structure of the eyes are in place, it just sets the tone, it sets the stage for the rest of the portrait. And abstracted, I'm just looking at this shadow shape. You know, this shadow shape comes down and across, and the shadow of the eye melts in with the edge of his glasses. He's actually wearing a pair of spectacles. So, you know, at this stage, don't worry about what's on his face or how, how you think you're gonna draw the glasses. It's just the shadow shape. If you just focus on the shadow shape, the glasses and the eyes will li literally sort of just draw themselves. Okay, now, the shadow underneath the structure, the bone structure under his cheekbone. So the cheekbone will flow roughly into the upper lip. See how it nearly points down into the upper lip there. So if it helps, just very lightly kind of sketch that in to get a sense of where the cheekbone is, is positioned. And because the way the light is, is here, the shadow ends just underneath the corner of the eye there. So now all of this is in shadow. And I can build off from that center, roughly where the hair is, that's all in shadow. Okay. His upper lip, his upper lip is in shade. So I'm going to Again, keep that tone all the same. Just make sure that the corners of the mouth do not exceed the middle of the eye, the pupils of the eye. 
Okay, and now to the chin. See, in holding my pencil like this, it's preventing me from going too dark. I can, I can just very lightly mass in my shapes. At this stage, it's just, remember, keep in mind those shadow shapes. Focus on the shadow shapes. This is the shadow underneath his neck. Okay. It's a bit of shadow on the right side of his face, our left, his right. Just to flesh out the other side there, the jawline. Usually where the mouth line is, if you just carried it over, cross, that's the break in the jaw. So when you're turning the corner from this, the side of the cheek to the jaw there, there's a plane change and it usually breaks at the level of the mouth. So you can see that. Same with the other side here. Okay, now for the ear. Remember the ear is positioned from the, roughly the, the brow ridge and the base of the nose. That is roughly the ear. Now his entire ear is in shade. So I'm just gonna fill the whole thing in that, that solid tone. And don't worry. Because again, the eye, at this stage, the eye is going to fill that in. Okay, now his hair is dark, so I'm just going to mask that in. The, the other ear, I'm just going to line that up. It's great practice to uh, find faces, whether from an old book or a magazine or the newspaper, and just practice this. Um, this this technique, and the more you practice, the uh, you know the more practicing a portrait, the, the features taken from just a, a newspaper, the better you'll get. And you'll, you'll really solidify this technique um, into your own art practice. So particularly we're trying to get a likeness because you'll, getting a likeness can be one of the hardest things to do uh, in art. And I find just by focusing on the shadow shapes, You can get there. You can, ten, you can. You tend to get there a bit quicker. Okay. Now for the neck and the his shoulder, I'm going to start by finding first where the the neck really emanates from, back behind the ear. So that's where those muscles are, and they fold. They kind of flow into the, the center, the top of the rib cage. And they make sort of a diamond, or, or sorry, a, a V. So just by lightly doing that, I can begin to position where his shoulder girdle will be. So that's the... Very distinguished sort of pose and manner about the way he's sitting. And that's all dark. So this this is what, what what would be called a bust, just the head and shoulders. And we can keep the bust, the shoulders here quite loose. But as long as you have some sense of the shoulder girdle, it'll just help to support the head, so that the head doesn't look like it's it's just floating. It's always good to put a neck, a neck on the on your portraits. Okay. So now we'll get into the 
the finer details. So with your eraser, just start to erase away some of those initial construction lines. And because I was only a little, I was light with it, I can make slight corrections where I need to, like for instance, the broadness of his cheekbone. It's a bit fuller. A lot of character to Modrion's face. It's always good to be, even if you see the edge soft, a soft edge, try to make it initially nice and clear because the clearer you make the edge between light and shade, the stronger the character in your portrait. Then later on you can soften it. But at first, really make it distinct because it'll it'll give your portraits more um, more strength of character. Put more light on his cheek here. These subtle little shifts, like for instance, I'm just changing the direction of, of the jaw there. Um, it'll just help to give it a bit more character. That's it. Okay, now for your edges. So at this stage, what you want to do is identify the two different types of edges. So in a drawing, You've got two shadow shapes. You've got your cast shadow and your form shadow. So the form shadow is just created because the light hits the form and rolls away and gradually becomes darker. So the form is turning away from the light. And that creates more or less a softer edge. Then this form casts itself onto another form, in this case the ball, onto a tabletop. And because it's casting a shadow, that cast shadow tends to be a bit more distinct, sharper, more delineated in its edge. So when you make that difference in your drawing, you'll get more clarity and you'll get, you'll get more form. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to start to strengthen some of these shadows. Like for instance, along the cast shadow, along the uh, underneath the nostril. These kneaded erasers are fantastic because you can literally shape them into, a, say, a, a pencil point and make your corrections. So usually the top edge, or sorry, the bottom edge of your the lips the, tend to be a bit sharper. So I'm going to strengthen now that bottom edge of the lower of the upper lip, just to give it a bit more form. Strengthen the the shape of his brow. At this stage, I can move over, positioning my charcoal in this in this position because I'm refining the shapes. So it might require a bit more uh, delicacy in my stroke. So. 
Mondrian has a very distinctive broad forehead, so I'm just going to alter that where the forehead meets the temple there. It's quite um, pronounced, so just by reshaping this. You notice too, I haven't yet put in any of the halftone. I'm still just sticking with the shadow shapes. Okay, so I'll show you how to deal with the halftone as soon as we get through the distinctive shadow shapes. Just refining the outer edge of the the hair there. And now his other brow. His, his glasses on the, the nose rim there, the bridge on the bridge of his nose, creates a, a little bit of a shadow. So just by indicating that, it'll help to evoke the sense that he's wearing a pair of spectacles here. Very dark, very black uh, mustache here. Is the cash shadow on his nostril? Also, take a look at the curvature around the whole muzzle of the mouth. So there's a there's a large muscle, a circular muscle around the lips. It's called the orbicularis, and it follows this furrow that's that runs alongside the nostril. Circular sort of motion. So you could start to just indicate some of that because it's going to help you to get the roundness of the muscle that supports the, the lips. And it creates the little shadow underneath the lower lip. And some of these muscles underneath the lower lip called the depressor muscles. Okay, you can start to just soften some of these edges now. And there's a cast shadow from the created by the uh, the glass of the spectacles there. So just by putting that in, it's going to help to create the effect that he's wearing glasses without drawing these complicated shapes. It's just a cast shadow. And the nose braces here, just by indicating that, you create the effect that there's his glasses resting on his nose. The very dark eyes. Strengthen that now. Just make sure that the eyes are lining up. It's all in shadow. Slight little shadow on the other side, but it's not as pronounced. What is pronounced is the the ear support. Strengthen the eyes there. Do take your time with this. It, it just requires to get a good portrait. It takes time and patience to really get these little shapes correct because the smallest little shape difference can make the person look like, not the person, but maybe a relation of the person or somebody um, different entirely. So 
really take your time. All the great portraits of art, if you study them, the shapes and the tones are so precise. So, uh, But initially, all that precision is resting on a very clear structural groundwork of the light and the dark pattern. Okay, now, the, the purpose of this demonstration was to talk about the white chalk. So I'm going to now describe for you how I'm going to how to put that in. Okay, so once I have a basic framework, I can now begin with the white chalk. Now, the head is a ball, so the highlight of the ball is roughly here. So you have to be careful. Once you put your white chalk, you're only putting it in specific places. You're not putting it everywhere in the light because the gray of the paper is going to act as the half tone. So my brightest area is right in the center here. So I'm going to build that up. And the more you build up, if I stay on the same spot with white, it'll just get whiter and whiter because I'm building up layers of white. So I'm going to cross hatch there and then gradually fade it because that central light is sort of dissipating as it moves off to the edge. I won't put it here because that's where it's wrapping on the sides of the temple. It's a little bit on the brow, above the eyebrows and hair. And then these furrows between his eyes, leaving spaces of gray, the gray paper will create the lines of the furrows. Same with these furrows on the side of his nose here. You, you really don't have to put lines, draw lines, because if you drew a dark line, it might be too dark. So instead, just avoid putting white chalk and, and the gray of the paper will create the line of the furrow. That's the beauty of the white chalk. It, it sort of does the drawing for you. Now there's some highlights on his cheekbone here. And then there's a drop on the, uh, as it rolls into the, the mass, that masseter muscle on the side of the face. Very soft. Uh, the lower lip is in light. I'm going to brighten that up a bit. Uh, then it goes dark, and then it's light again on the chin. Just make sure that the lights down in the lower end of the face are not as bright as the forehead. See, the forehead is your brightest area. That has to, that has to be the dominant light. Just avoid putting that white too much along the hairline. And on his nose here, the nasal bone. The nasal bone is what's facing the light. And a little bit on the tip of the nose here, that highlight on the tip of the nose. And that's what's going to help make the nose come forward. bag under his eye and the white of the eye is just on the bottom and there's a little so the white on the eye on this side so again only put the white the white chalk for the white of the eye on the bottom part because the rest of the white of the eye is in, is in shade there's a highlight on the bottom rim of the glasses which would be fun for you to put in you see, just putting those little strokes creates the effect that he's got glasses, and I've barely even drawn glasses. Uh, inside the ear here is quite bright, so I'm going to start to indicate some of those folds within the ear, the ear lobe, and a little bit on the outer helix, so that top edge of the, of the ear. Uh, 
and a little bit on the edge of the upper eyelid. Just take your time finding, spotting these little areas. There's also a beautiful little highlight in the actual eye, the highlight on the eye. And you can wait till the very end to do that. If it helps, use your eraser first to pick out the dark before putting the white right directly on the dark. And it'll help to just place it. So at least you can see if it's in the right place first with the eraser. And if it looks correct and, and even, then you know you've got it placed well. You can also, once you've got your highlight in, just go back in with the charcoal and darken around the highlight, and that'll help to make it stand out even more. This is a fantastic way to draw portraits because so much can be done with so few strokes um, with the white chalk. And I'll just sort of tidy this up by putting in the white of his collar. Mondrian is known for his uh, his abstract paintings, but if you Google his his early work, um, it's actually quite realistic and absolutely beautiful. Uh, he did some beautiful landscapes um, before he ventured into pure abstraction. Um, and but you can they're painted in such a way that they have they utilize almost a kind of a you see the influence of a, ge a geometry or geometric stroke. In some of them, and um, you can almost see where he ended up with his full abstraction. But there, I highly recommend looking at those early landscapes because some of them are absolutely exquisite. They're beautiful. Um, just darken the. Men's fashion back then was fantastic to draw all the men in ties and tight fitting kind of uh, suits and things uh, conforming to their, their body structure, which it made for great character um, and a, a sophistication um, in the portraits back then. Just to strengthen this dark here. This is Again, with practice, you will really get a sense of how to utilize the shadow pattern for your for your portraits. And of course, you can always go back in and darken your half tone, like for instance, along the temple. But you really don't have to darken it too much. Because remember, you want to utilize the gray of the paper. That gray of the paper should still come through and work for you. you, you the whole idea is to have the gray of the paper working with you because you don't want to end up covering all the gray of the paper. It's the gray that gives such a lovely sense of tone and feeling to the portrait. Okay, thank you very much everybody for your time and um, just remember to stay safe, to um, still keep the, the social distancing and to remember to wash your hands. Thanks very much everybody. Be well, bye-bye.